Yo, it is in the 30s here in New York today. I have to pull out my Malian coat. Mm. I'm about to take this one off <laughs> for this heated video topic here. I don't know if y'all men can handle this one. I don't know because I'm about to drop some truth bombs on y'all ass. Some straight truth bombs. Let's come out of this for a quick second though. Let's talk. <laughs> Let's talk. Let's talk. So, this is what I'm wearing today, you guys. A skirt. Let's say you right here. This coat is pretty heavy, too. It's thick material. Just like I like it. Oh, this is I chose to wear this skirt, you guys. This is this is the one. <laughs> But anyway, let's, oh my gosh, you want to have fun with this. Let's, let's do it. The skirt really doesn't matter anyway, considering I'm going to have on my coat today. So, shall I preface this video by saying that the characters and the stories that are shared here within are fictional, based on reality. <laughs> Let's get some incense going. How are y'all doing, by the way? Y'all know it's real when I gotta pull out the ginger juice. <laughs> Not that. I don't usually drink ginger juice anyway during my videos. Just like I like it. Made by the Africans. I feel like I need to come up closer. I like to be intimate with you guys. Like right there. All up in y'all fucking face. There we go. Hey. <laughs> Yo, this video was sparked, like I said, by real life events, fictional characters, fictional story. How fictional? <laughs> I'll let y'all figure it out. Y'all know I'm a, I'm a great storyteller. I'm going to show y'all this trick. Check this out. This is Palo Santo, by the way. Check this out. It's my they say, like, once you ascend to a higher level of consciousness, you surpass, like, physical, the physical realm, right? And fire, obviously, is a physical characteristic all right i need to get one of those big blow torches all right let's see do i have it do i have it let's get this side i thought this was really cool i did this i like to experiment Cause my AC is on. Hold on, let's let's do this here. I'm trying to get a big flame. Without it going out, a lovely aroma. All right. Yo, I had a tall flame yesterday when I did it. Ooh. 
just the fire. Mm. <laughs> All right. I think that's so cool, you guys. To be able to put your hand through fire and not feel it. Oh, I love that. All right, let's get started. With these stories. Where should I begin? So, when I was living out in Los Angeles, California, I met several different people, right? But a few kind of stand out. A few of my friends that I met really do stand out. And I actually had followed up with them. Well, they, he reached out to me, actually. Like, he reached out. We kind of keep in contact. You know, you have friends, like, you're cool, then you lose contact, and then you reach out again, and they reach out again, and, and you guys kind of, like, rekindle. Rekindle. <laughs> not re That was a bad word. Not rekindle. But you reconnect. So he reached out to me on Instagram, right? And was like, what's up? And so, you know, I... Me and my arrogant, sometimes I like to put men on just the back burner, pause, like put your ass in time out for a second, right? So I had them like, I had them like simmering <laughs> in the inbox. And then some told me just to go and reach out to them yesterday, right? And so I followed up and we, we reconnected. And you know how you reconnect with someone you haven't um, heard from in a while or seen in a while. We reconnected and we were talking yesterday. We were texting, right? <laughs> and, you know, just catching up, you know, seeing how things were going. This is my fashion designer friend, by the way. Um, he has does great work, knows a lot of, like, celebrities who he has like design clothing for um really cool guy right and so um we were catching up you know i'm letting him know you know things are going well for me you know living here in new york it's like he's out in los angeles and he's saying oh i think i want to come to new york <laughs> of course you do <laughs> he's like i want to come to new york and I have this thing where I'm very protective of my space, right? My inner space, my energy, and my space around me where I live, my, like my house, my sanctuary. So I don't really invite people over. And I had the sense that in his mind he's thinking like, oh, I come visit, like, oh. I can come to your house, right? I knew that before he even said it. But he's like, yeah, um, I come to New York. You know, I want to come there. I have, like, some um, editorial shots I want to do, da, da 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 right? Just typical business stuff. And I tell him, like, yo, nothing has changed with you, right? You're still on the grind. Like, you're still chasing the bag, da da da, da. Which is cool, but... Uh, unless the... A focus is on me. I can care less. No, let me stop. So, he's like, yeah, it'll probably be like in December. Which is like right around the corner, right? Thanksgiving is fucking this Thursday. Wow. And so, I'm like, alright. So, he's like, yeah, I'll look into some. Like, he was like, do you know, like, what are some good hotels um, in the area? I'm like, well, I live in Upper East Side. And so, <laughs> I guess you can check the area in Upper East Side. You can check, right? I'm like, you know, perhaps Airbnb. Because who really rents, like, hotels anymore, right? People like to do Airbnbs. Um, because you get, like, to rent a whole house, a whole space, right, with the Airbnb. And he's like, all right. And then he's like, oh, you can check. I'm not checking shit. That's, that's for you to check, right? But anyway, then he comes around and says, oh, maybe uh, I can stay at your place. 
that's a joke. <laughs> no, you're not. I shut that shit down so quick. Like, nah, you're not staying here because I don't have visitors. I don't invite people. No, I only had two visitors, I shall say, since I've been here in this place. Only two. Strategically, right? One of which is a good African friend from Gambia, West Africa. And only reason why I invited him over is because he has, like, his place in New York, he opened it to me, all right? So anytime when I would come visit New York from L.A., he would give me the keys under no obligation. Just, you know, just being out of the kindness of his own heart, just giving me his keys or whatever. He's going to work. I have access to his place, right? I have a place to stay for free. I don't have to come out of the pocket, right? So, of course, when I got my place, I'm like, yeah, come over. <laughs> Duh. Um, he's the one that was, like, looking around when he first came here. Because I do have, obviously, exposed brick, right? But then the other walls are white. He's like, oh, this is like the White House. So, yo, he's the one that motivated me to do all this color in my place. But anyway... So, yeah, him and then another person that I invited over. But that's it. I don't have people. I don't have visitors. So I was letting him know that, like, no, nah, you're going to have to find somewhere. Like, we cool and all, but you're going to have to find somewhere else. And so in his mind, he's thinking, like, come on, like, you know, we go way back. Like, you know, because, like, back in L.A., he had a house, right? And I was invited to his house. Now, granted... <laughs> I've been all up in his house, right? But that don't mean you can come to my shit. I'm just that I'm just that kind of person. And so I said to emphasize, we have to set boundaries here. Like I have to set boundaries. <laughs> You're not coming to my place. And I was like, yeah, no. You know, one thing leads to another and then boom. And he was like, ha ha ha, yeah. And I'm like, nah, it ain't going down like that. I can't just be fucking having random casual sex. Unless, unless it's good, right? That's the caveat. Unless it's good. <laughs> I dropped the bomb. Was that a bomb? Was that a fucking bomb that I dropped on his ass? I dropped a bomb unless it's good, right? Now, granted... We did have, I think, one session. And sometimes I get in my bag where, yeah, I wouldn't say it's casual sex, though. For me, sex is very sacred. And there are certain special people who are afforded the opportunity to share in with me this spiritual awakening, right, through intercourse with me. He's one of them. Um... <laughs> But going back, I was like, unless it's good. I don't have fucking random casual sex. And he was like, oh, come on. You know our session was bomb. And then he leaves like a little fucking emoji. Two emojis, right? What do you call that fucking dick emoji? What do you call the dick emoji? He leaves a dick emoji in like a splash of water. I had to laugh, yo. That was like, I needed that laugh. I needed that laugh yesterday. I fucking bust out laughing, yo. Like, I couldn't. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> he really thinks that his shit is good. But guess whose fault it is? Women. It's our fault. That we mislead men into thinking they shit is fucking good. It, yo, men already have a fucking ego, right? Everybody has an ego, but I'm saying their ego is like oversized. They already like walk around like they shit don't fucking stink sometimes, yo. And women have a tendency to stroke men's ego. I can speak for myself. I know I do it. Especially, like, in the bed, right? You just, you don't want to make a man feel bad. So, even if the sex is bad, women still be moaning and shit. You still moan, like, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Eyes closed, like, it feels so good when the dick is whack. 
you in for a rude awakening because the size of his penis is fucking pencil dick. But it's it can be so misleading because yo, they walk, they carry this persona like they got big dick energy, yo. That's the shit that fuck you up. They walk around like, yeah, they got the swag and everything. Then, you know, you, you build up to this moment, right? Because there's a lot of foreplay that happens outside of the fucking bedroom leading up to the moment, you know, just vibing and good times and intellectual exchange of energy and ah, right? Then you're in the bed. Legs open, ready to take him in, ready to behold his manhood feel his energy, to exchange energy right with him. And he pulls out a fucking pencil dick. <laughs> pencil fucking dick. So I dropped the bomb on him yesterday. I'm like, honestly, it was all right. Because he's like, oh, don't I like our session wasn't bomb. <laughs> After I said that I just don't have casual fucking sex, right? We're discussing the possibility of him potentially staying at my place when he comes to visit, which is, ah, no, it's a big no-no, okay? Nah, 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 boundaries are set. And he's like, don't act like our shit wasn't bomb. Our session wasn't bomb. And yo, I'm like, damn, I really like gas his fucking head up. He is like feeling on his king shit, yo. He's on his king shit. Confidence all, all the way up on 10. And so I'm like, damn, I've matured since then. I'm 38 years old, right? And I feel like it's a time where women, we got to be honest with men. Fuck all that goddamn saving his feelings and shit, right? Sparing his feelings. Be honest. And so, that was my moment of truth. I was like, nah, it was all right. I said, it was all right. But you're lacking in girth. Someone says, how many inches do I need? Yo, we're not talking about inches. Just sit down, park yourself, and listen, okay? Just park yourself and listen. It's not about inches, y'all. I've made a video on this before. But going back to this story, right, like I said, is based on fictional characters and fictional characters <laughs> based on real life events, right? And so I told him, I said, you're lacking in girth. And yo, I, yo, I think I broke, I, I, I fucking dropped the bomb. He did not expect that. He was like, oh, wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then, yo, that was the end of the fucking text message, text message ex exchange, yo. He just, like, it was a long silence. Up until then, it was momentum. You know how you're going texting back and forth and you're vibing and you're feeling each other. And then, boom, that was just like, oh, wow. <laughs> I fucking bruised his ego. I bruised the fuck out of his ego. I shattered his shit. I'm like, yeah. Thumbs up for me. Thumbs up for me for fucking being honest. First time being honest about fucking that shit, you know? And so, then I felt bad. I was like, damn. That was too much honesty for his ass, right? So I messaged him. I said, sorry, I, I hope I didn't offend you. I said, I'm sure your girlfriend likes it. <laughs> I swear to God, I always have a fucking comeback, yo. You cannot, like, I feel like him saying that, because uh, we were giving each other's update, right? And he's like, oh, he has a girlfriend that they live together in the house. They have a house together. I'm like, okay, that's good and all. But you messaging me trying to fucking spend the night at my shit if you come to New York. That shit ain't going down. But I, <laughs> pun intended, yo, when I said, I know, I know your girlfriend likes it. <laughs> yo, that is so fucking hilarious. I have to just, mm. <laughs> I have to just take it. I have to just sit with it. Just like, I feel very proud of myself. 
But it made me reflect, though, for him to be like, oh, wow, like, he was surprised. Like, in his mind, leading up to that bomb that I dropped, he had in his mind that his shit was fire. And I know I'm responsible for that because, you know, I'm just, you know, like women do. We, uh, we moan, uh, uh, we fake orgasms and shit, yo. Just to please a fucking man. Of course, his ass got his goddamn nut off. Of course. Men always fucking orgasm. Men always come. Very quick, okay? Super fast from what I've seen. Super fucking, like, it, <laughs> it be blowing my mind. I'm like, damn, my shit is really that goddamn good. It has to be. I think with the combination of having a very tight, constricted vagina, right? Especially when you don't have sex on a regular basis, right? Very tight, constricted, and moist. And then on top of that, it's the buildup, the psychological buildup in a man's mind. Like he, it's like women are really the prize, right? And when a man, sometimes men don't feel like they can get you. Or they deserve you. And I make every man feel that way. I don't think I do it intentionally. It's just like, it's just an energy, right? So even like, I've said this before, even the most uh, elite man, right? The most qualified man <laughs> in my presence, Joey, he's going to feel fucking inadequate. He's going to feel like he don't deserve me. But then when he gets me though, like, if he gets me, right? I think he's so excited with the buildup that when it happens and the you know the penetration happens, it's just like fireworks. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's fucking hilarious. But then it can be on the other end frustrating, right? Because you know, one man is really satisfied. So that's one story, which reminds me of another story. Pencil dick. Ugh. And then the, the fucking premature ejaculation. When men ejaculate before they really want to. This happens a lot. I, like, I think it, ha it happens a lot. But I recall it happening with my Gambian friend. And like, I'm like, are you fucking serious? Like, how can a man ejaculate? As he inserts. Now I know none of y'all are going to admit to this. Ejaculating. Like as you insert. You just boom. It's out there. Are you kidding me? <laughs> are you that excited? <laughs> I get it. And that's why I think a lot of men. They try to compensate for that. By giving oral sex. And they spend so long giving a woman oral sex. I don't like oral sex. Nah. Mm-mm. I even reject it. Like, I don't like it. Don't try to compensate for the lack <laughs> of your ability to please a woman, penetrate her sexually, right? With giving her a head. Don't, don't, nah. That don't work for me. Penetration is the, the thing. And you just got to be a healthy man and, and know how to regulate yourself, your ejaculation, right? Because I, I, I get it. It's a very exciting titillating moment when you have the opportunity you're there <laughs> it's, it's energizing you know it's like it is a, it is an energy exchange yo. It, it is i get it but come correct and then i was talking to a, another friend on the phone very good guy and we're getting to know each other. He's a potential. We're getting to know each other. And we're exploring fears. Because I can sense when there is some hesitation in a person. Obviously, I study human behavior. I can sense when there is some hesitation. Right? When a person has a guard up. And they're guarded. And they're afraid. So we're exploring that. And he's like, I'm reluctant to... Give a, a a woman, right, a partner, a potential partner, like, invest my energy and my time. He's afraid. And he told me about his prior experience, how he did that. And it wasn't appreciated. Like, she just kind of stole his heart. Obviously, she wasn't for him. 
he had this dream to go and live out in the tropics and she came with him and just pretty much stole his heart and left, right? So as a lot of men have this ideology, this narrative that, you know, kind of put your goals over women, right? Put put money over bitches, so to speak, right? Um, put the mission kind of over just your inclination to move towards a woman. I get that. He's struggling with That's an internal struggle that he's fighting with, right? Because I, I know the fucking solution. It's not even about having to choose, but in his mind, he feels he has to choose between the mission, building a relationship. Because that's the crossroad that he came to before, where him investing in a woman, he felt compromised his mission, so to speak, right? So he's been tainted, and so he's hesitant. But he love, he likes me, right? He likes me. He's feeling me. And I say, you know what? I get you. I, I understand the plight. I get it. I get it so much that what you're saying, what you're afraid of, I've done. I've done that to a man. Well, not intentionally, though. I feel like it wasn't done on purpose. Because he makes a statement that, you know, he's afraid to invest his time and energy into a woman because he doesn't want to be used. And I say, perhaps a woman doesn't use a man intentionally, but you feel used after you realize that the relationship doesn't work. Damn. I know what you mean because I've been on the other side of that where I know that a man probably felt used, that I used him, right? I don't use men. For, use you for what? I don't need him in that way. Of course I need a man, but not to... Like, there are women who really do feel like their survival depends on a man in that way. They use men intentionally. They have in their mind, like, oh, I just want to use him for his money, get the bag, or whatever. But no, right? But I know I can resonate with that situation because... I know that, I know, like, I'm very in tune with people's emotions, their feelings, and I know that a man felt that way with me. I know, I can, I can tell when a man felt like, damn. <laughs> ah, so this was two years ago. This was two years ago, around this time, around the holiday season, two year, 2019. And I met this guy who really liked me. And I liked him, you know, very successful businessman. I was living out in Los Angeles. He was living here in New York. He's so excited to see me and want to spend the holidays with me, right? So he booked a last-minute flight, came to like the $1,000 round trip from L.A. to New York. I'm spontaneous. I'm like, what the fuck? I don't have any plans. I don't have anything to do. So I accepted. Went out there to New York. Or went out here, basically, to New York. And, <laughs> yo, he had it mapped out. Picked me up from the airport. Greeted me with a bouquet. I think it was roses. Whatever kind of flowers it was. Nice bouquet of flowers, right? Ah. Oh. Thank you. Just the the ideal situation of what a woman would expect in meeting a person, a man on a blind date, right? Rolled out the fucking red carpet. Planned a very expensive dinner date at a high-end restaurant in Times Square. Revolving restaurant, right? That gives you very nice views of New York City. And I was curious to see, like, damn, how much did you spend on this date, okay? Because this is a first date. He went all the way out on the fucking limb. And he's like, oh, it was roughly like seven, eight hundred dollars but don't worry. Okay. Now, the food was great. I ordered what I wanted. Of course, I took pictures. It was great. They had like 
a area like of it was like multiple floors, right? And they had a floor where you go on and you kind of like get appetizers. So you get like this this array of fucking food, so much food, and then you go to another floor, and then that's when you have the dinner. But it was nice candlelit dinner. He came out the pocket. I was just like, oh okay. But then here's a fucking kicker. Right, because I was staying at his place, right? I was staying at his place um, for the holidays. And you're talking about a level of fucking frustration and disappointment where, yes, we're sharing a bed. The time comes around where we get intimate. We exchange this sacred energy. And... It was dissatisfaction, disappointment. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Premature ejaculation. And then he came up with this thing where, and I, it wasn't made up. It wasn't made up. I get it, right? Shit happens. And he had suffered a injury from a terrible car accident where he was, he was hit while walking. New York City. He had just moved to New York City from Africa, the Ivory Coast. And he thought his ass was invincible. He got hit. This is way before he and I had met anyway, right? And boom, he got hit. But he didn't tell me he had a fucking injury. He didn't tell me that his ass had a physical, invisible physical disability. I didn't know. I didn't know about this, right? But it came to surface because he started to experience back pain. Aha. And he was like, oh, I was fine before you got here. So I didn't think it would be an issue. You were fine. Yeah, this shit is going to fucking get triggered because you using muscles that your ass probably haven't used in a while having sex. And this shit is fucking whack. It's lame, yo. So it's like, oh, well, usually when I experience this pain, which it kind of comes and goes, maybe like every six months, I'll go to the my doctor and he gives me a pain shot. It's like, you can come with me so you can see that I'm not lying about it. I went with him. I wasn't, honestly, at that, yo, I think I've matured since then, right? But at that point, I didn't give a fuck about the goddamn pain. Like, what the hell? You didn't mention this. You didn't say that you have these issues here, right? So this is spoiling the entire experience. I'm like, okay, no wonder he spends so much money on a date. He's overcompensating for he his his known lack, right? He know that his ass has deficits. <laughs> Ugh. So somehow a woman is supposed to just tolerate bad sex because a man has a physical limitation, right? And not only that, not even bad sex, the absence of sex, right? Because I think he really tried. I think that's the reason what knocked his back into the pain shit. Because the first, like, he really tried to impress, right? He was like, ah, it's aight. But, um, nah. I know when a man is, like, really in shape, right? When a man is, like, really in shape, he ain't got no kind of problems in his body, you know? Just knocking, knocking the boots, right? Knocking the boots, I think he was just trying to do too much and yeah and that's what knocked his body into that pain and then he had to go get his little shot and i'm just like what am i dating here what is this i was completely disappointed and turned the fuck off and not only that i think his pain also contributed to like depression too so i can sense that he was like kind of depressed because he was sleeping a lot and i'm just like this is a turn off to me granted like i say he was very successful businessman um, in the process of buying a house in New York, which he was showing me, like, you know, the options and all. I'm like, I don't really care about that. <laughs> because I can't see myself with a man. I'm just sorry. I'm just, I'm too young for this. <laughs> like, I get it. Shit happens. But, listen, this is the whole point of the video. The, I feel like bad sex is a deal breaker for me. It is. It's a deal. It's like at this point, it's a deal breaker. And some people may say it's vain, but you got to keep it 100. If you're not satisfied, you're not satisfied. And for a lot of people like myself, sex 
It's not everything, granted. There are other things that need to be in place. I'm not that fucking vain. There are other, th obviously. But all else is equal, right? Sex got to be right. Because that's, that's how you further strengthen the bond that you have with a person. And I was sharing that with this potential partner. And he's like, oh, I can relate because, you know, I have my experience, da, 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 with a woman where I actually had to kind of put my sexual desires on the back burner because of her situation, da, da, da. So he's trying to impress me, right? <laughs> I feel like men, y'all love abuse. That's what it is, men like that. It's like when you go hard on a man and you're mean, then that's when they pull, they draw closer to your ass. Because they really like to put in the work to try to, to pull you. Men are like hunters, right? They they like that, that, that challenge. Tug of war game. But I'm making it clear to this potential person, like, yo, the sex got to be fucking right. And so he's coming forward. He was like, you know, I believe in honesty because, you know, getting to know a person, you got to put things out on the table so that a person can make an informed decision on what they want. And I'm like, ah, there you go, bingo. <laughs> and there you go. You're getting my drift here, right? And so he's like being honest about his sex drive and saying how at one point, yeah, it was like it means something. It was important. But I guess as men aged, you know, their sex drive declines and other things are of more importance, I guess. Right? Fuck that. Um, but I'm looking at him, yo. This potential guy. And I'm just like, damn, this motherfucker fire as shit. He fires out, yo. Like, he's muscular. I think he's muscular, like natural, or nat naturally muscular, where he doesn't really have to work out necessarily. But he's just like, damn. On swole. Ugh. And he eats healthy too. I'm like, ah, ah. Um, but I think this is like, I feel like it goes without saying. And it's just like a lot of women struggle with this. Ugh. It's a very unfortunate reality. Like a lot of people, I think, period. Because he said that he was on the other end too, where he actually said he dated a woman fucking had to have a bag a shit bag attached to her and he they really couldn't have sex like that because she had like some kind of physical problem medical condition right and but you know he found a way to appreciate other things about her and value other things about their relationship and sex then became less of a priority <laughs> It's like, ah, I'm, he's matured in that respect, right? And I'm just like, yo, that's a higher level of maturity. Hmm. And when you think about it, it kind of goes into the same topic discussion that we've been having on cuckold, right? And people's reasons for cuckolding. It makes fucking sense. Just like, you can like a person, right? And it's the reason why you guys are drawn together. The universe just brought you together. But then perhaps the sex is fucking whack. But you don't want to just throw that person away. Because you're like, they, they have really great qualities. And I can see myself being a lifetime partner to this person, right? And that's building. <sighs> the only weakness is that the sex is fucking whack or non-existent. So then... <laughs> they, they have an alternative route, right? To making it work. Which is bringing in a third will, bringing in a bull to sexually satisfy the woman, bringing in a fucking ex escort or whatever you call those women that please men, you know? I don't know. I, I just, I can't wrap my mind around it to be able to accept that kind of reality for myself. Just doesn't seem right. Just doesn't seem right. So, of course, <laughs> cut that guy off. It's like I, I can't, I can't do this. I just kind of lost respect for him. I felt like maybe had he told me, I don't know. I would have had to really explore like what are the implications of that, like in a conversation with him about his 
physical disability. Now, granted, it wasn't visible, so it's not like you see him. He walks just like everybody else walks, no issue, but things were coming up. Like, it was, we were approaching New Year's Eve, the countdown here in New York. It's a big thing. And, of course, even though I've lived in New York for several years, I walk around New York like I'm a tourist, and I do touristy shit, right? So, of course, I want to, like, participate in New York in the New Year's Eve, you know, activity celebrations and stuff. And he's like, oh, my back. And then the pain kind of just trickles down to his legs. Like, oh, I have pain in my legs. I can't stand for that long, which I kind of dragged him out. I think I made him feel bad, and we went out anyway. But because he was, like, he didn't really want to go, like, I was so annoyed. And he was, just, like, trying to keep me happy and, 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 and like, because I'm his guest. What the fuck? If you, I could have stayed my goddamn on black ass in Los Angeles, right? And so, like, I, I can, I'm a very nice, soft-spoken woman. Even tempered. Don't get it mistaken, right? But I'm human. So when the frustration builds up, it builds up, right? <laughs> and when, you know, that's when the, the truth comes out. All right, because until then you're just kind of being very agreeable and just like okay, mm, yeah, yeah. how women are conditioned to be, right? And then you start to get annoyed and frustrated, and yo, know, the truth fucking came out my ass, and I just had to break it to him. Like yo, I could have stayed my motherfucking ass in Los Angeles, okay? I was doing great there. You made the proposition to. Book a round trip, last minute goddamn flight, paying a thousand dollars. You chose that restaurant. <laughs> you know? Um, you fucking invited me to your place. You fucking assume that you can satisfy me sexually. And you failed, okay? You failed. <laughs> With the choices that you made. And we're having to deal with those choices. You know, like my response to those. Like the experience. And I'm just being honest. Like I'm giving him a fucking face-to-face -face review. Right? You know how you guys go and you purchase experiences. And you don't like it. And you go leave a review. Well, that's kind of similar. Right? We're, we're dating. You know. I didn't come out the pocket or anything purchase experience but it's just like I gave him an honest review face to face on how I felt about the experience this shit is crap like uh, I felt so bad that I fucking stepped out and got me somebody else <laughs> I'm like I'm about to go and spend he's like where are you going you're packing up where are you I'm going somewhere else I'm going to go be with someone else who can fucking sexually satisfy my ass cause you whack now Fast forward, this was like the same time period. I met this Mandingo warrior. <laughs> Yo, the Mandingo warrior came through for your girl, okay? I'm like, hi, hey. This is the reason why I came to all the way. How many miles is it from LA to New York? However many miles I fucking came, I traveled. Yeah, it made it worthwhile, okay? Sorry, right? So I know... Guys, listen to this story like, oh, you ain't shit. Right? And I had to tell the guy, like, of this potential guy that I'm considering dating, right? We're weighing it out. And he's talking about his fears. <laughs> and not wanting to feel used by a woman. I just had to put it, listen, hey, <laughs> put it out the table. Now, you can make your informed decision, Right? I don't want to use a man. I'm not here to fucking use your ass. But I can tell you something in, uh, I've experienced in the past that led to me making a decision on a person that did invest a lot, right? And I'm he. I'm pretty sure he fucking felt you was disappointed. He felt you. He was like, oh, she threw me away. She doesn't want to be with me. Da da da. So, unless you got a whack-ass penis, you should be fine. You don't have no 
nothing to worry about. Like, I like you. I'm physically attracted to you. You know? You got, like, he has qualities that, like, I like in a man. You know? Alpha and all that great shit. You know? Ugh. <sighs> um. But. I don't know what y'all think. Because for him to bring up. It made me think now. For him to bring up. Hmm, his prior experiences trying to relate trying to relate to my story like oh yeah you know i have some experience of my own where i kind of put sex on the back burner why did you put sex on the back burner because he's trying to attribute it to oh women had a a medical condition uh-huh Yo, cause let's can be deceiving, yo. Man can be fine, six foot tall and shit, muscular. Ah, and shape, eating healthy and all that. But then they know that this shit don't really work down there like that. You know what I'm saying? So I felt like that's his way of kind of putting it out on the table. But attributing it to the other person. Like, oh, well, you know, we didn't really have sex. I kind of matured I, I grew from having sex as a priority kind of like for the sake of the other person that's kind of the way he explained it right and i think he did that just to try to the test people we like to test people right in the beginning phase getting to know just to see how you respond and i was like oh, okay and i i mean honestly the way i responded i was like mm, i've grown too i think i have grown though i'm like i've grown like i said for me sex isn't really a priority can I say that very confidently? I don't know. <laughs> it's not really a priority. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it's important, right? And I say, obviously, my priority is building a family, having children. And, yeah, sex is necessary to do that. But that's the thing. See, we can have all these philosophical discussions until the shit hit the fan and you're actually in a situation with someone that you're not being sexually satisfied by. Then what what then what do you do? <laughs> then what? You're not you're disappointed, right? You have a fucking physical need, right? For me, I haven't had sex since December 2020. Yeah, it's been a while. On purpose though. I have like I put myself in like I call it like this psychological prison sometimes. But it's for like spiritual growth, right? And reflection and all that good stuff. I do this on purpose. And then I have times where I'm like, okay, time to come out of your cage, Danielle. <laughs> time to come out. You're, you're free to go, right? Um, and so now is that time. And I'm exploring my options and things like that. And I, I want to hear what you guys think, though, about this. Now, I know I triggered some of y'all. I know it. Especially men. Because I've made, this is not the first time i made a video like this. It's not the first time I've told fictional, real life stories <laughs> like this either. And I'm pretty frank and honest. And what's men's go-to? Oh, you like a super big dick. It's not about super fucking big dick, okay? You have a fucking super big dick and your shit's still whack as fuck. Because right? it's not really about that. And they'll still like, oh, you like super big dick. So you must have loosey goosey. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> if your shit is whack, your shit is whack. Point blank, period. Now, I get it. We're talking about experience that is co created between two people. Right? And so, yeah, I think it's a dynamic. A mutual dynamic that's shared that creates this this arousal within the people who are involved that could heighten the level of satisfaction that they experience right but no whack dick is whack dick pencil dick is just been you know you can't even wear around that right you can't be like oh well if the woman sucked my dick good enough then she would have had a more enjoyable experience now it ain't about that if you got a pencil dick 
You got a little dick. Point blank period, right? Men are obsessed. Oh, like the person asks here. Or how many in It's not about how many in Women don't need inches. It's not about inches. Don't get mistaken. It's not about inches, to be honest. Because even a 4.5, and I said this before about why does dick, why, why does size matter so much? I made a whole video on that. Why does size matter? And I, I think I was transparent enough to say, like, you know, 4.5 is really not that bad. Men who feel they have small, like, small in terms of the length of it feel like they have a small penis. It's 4.5. But when you pull out fucking four, a, a goddamn tape measure, which I did in that video, and you look at how long 4 point, it's not that short and when you know the anatomy of a woman women yo our vaginal opening is not that it's not that deep you don't you don't need that much fucking pain you don't need that much in fact that could cause discomfort in a woman if it's too goddamn long so it's not about oh how many inches a person a woman needs it's about do you know how to work with what the hell you got and a lot of men just don't they ain't got it they don't have it and then oh yeah the pencil dicks not yeah the pencil dicks is just like okay your shit is your shit can be like average length let's say five to seven inches long right but and this is on hard but if your shit is like, yo, there are pencil, like, skinny ass. Fuck yeah. How do you have a shit so skinny? Little fucking little teeny any way thing. Like, little skinny thing. No girth at all, okay? It's like, what the hell? But even a woman who whose vagina is very tight and constricted, right? It's like... It could, her muscles obviously will, 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 um, grasp, right? Will wrap very tightly around even a pencil dick. It will. Because <laughs> I've experienced this, right? And so he may feel like he's doing something. Like, oh shit, like, damn, pussy tight. Even with his pencil dick, you know? Um, <laughs> like, motherfucker. <laughs> Uh, the story, I, the, the, the fictional character I described here, it's just like, yeah, he thought his shit was bomb, right? And, you know, I'm moaning. Ah, 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 ah. No, bro, your shit whack. You know why? Because it's about the energy. You ain't got that big dick energy. It's all a facade. I feel, this is the thing. A man will know, because for him to say, oh, the session we had, session being singular, not plural. If your shit was that good, see, niggas that got good dick, know they got motherfucker. They truly know. They're not misled, cause some of y'all are misled into thinking that you got it. <laughs> Rub it in. <laughs> some of y'all are misled into thinking that you got good dick and you don't, right? But there are men who know they shit fire how do you know because you got women digmatized and you know when a woman is digma like she's on your ass you ain't going nowhere okay <laughs> and, and y'all want to call us crazy like oh she's it's a crazy bitch no you just got good dick okay just give yourself props you just got good dick she's not crazy you just got good dick okay because dick good dick will make a woman go fucking insane dick that's what they digmatize okay um, blowing up your phone, let you not fucking answer your phone, okay? Uh, she's on your ass. And she's coming back. It ain't no session, one session singular, okay? It's gonna be sessions, multiple, right? Like she's, she's gonna come back for more. She's gonna want more. She's gonna fall in love with your ass, probably just because you laying a dick, you laying that pipe right. Because sex is a form of communication, right? And you're communicating to her like, damn, I love you. Like, you're mine, you know. You're, you're owning her with your fucking dick. She's dreaming about your ass, right? She can't even stop thinking about you because it's just the way you make her feel. It's just like, yeah, you will know. <laughs> 
A woman ain't calling you like that, your shit will whack. Your shit whack. <laughs> Man need to like just, you know, appreciate when a woman is like that. Don't look at her as crazy. Remind me of Dr. Umar Johnson. He had a situation with the conscious stripper and she went kind of a little crazy. He had to lay the dick down. He let, he gave her what she wanted, but not as often as she wanted, though. Cause she wanted his ass more than what he could have time to give her, I guess, because he'd be on the road. And she took the fucking social media and broke the silence on the little affair they was having. Because he didn't really want nobody to know. He laid that dick down, okay? That's how you know. Cause ain't no woman gonna, we ain't gonna make no scene. We ain't gonna make a big to do for motherfucker. Shit was whack. Okay, well you ain't gotta call me every day. You know I don't really gotta hear from your ass no more because you just a further stress. But you cause frustration, right? It's just ah, you can go. But a man that laying it down, oh no, you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Oh, no, no, I'm about to go. I'll catch y'all later. Drop your comments below, right? Nobody should be offended. I know a lot of men be watching my shit. Y'all y'all be in y'all feelings. It ain't that deep. Don't take this shit fucking per This is just storytelling, okay? Don't get your panties in a bunch. Except that you, uh, you fucking got whack-ass penis. Wop. Just accept it. And move the fuck on. And just know, yeah, that a lot of women that you thought you dropped the bomb on or you had bomb sex with, like, ah, I got her. You ain't did shit, okay? Because why a lot of women be lying, and that's why I'm making this video. Women, y'all got to start telling the men the truth. That's going to be an experiment that I'm about to embark on. Just, if it's whack, it's whack. Let know in that moment. Nah, man. Get the fuck off me. Hell, get your ass off of me. Not nah, stop it right then and there. Nope. Not nah. even before. Let's say you can do an inspection. I said this before. I never really done it. But I said this before. That women, yo, inspect they fucking ass. Don't even let them get in. Be playing around between your legs. Before you see, you check them out. Make them get an erection. See what they erect. See what the strength of their erection is before you even take it there. Yeah, make himself get aroused. Let me see your dick. Okay, let me see how it's standing up. Because if you can't reach that full 90 degree angle, you ain't coming up in here. That's what we got to start having set standards. And let me see how long you maintain that. Let me see. Just, you need to perform outside of me first before you can come inside of me, right? Set that stand. Let me just, let me see. All right, you pass the test. All right, you can go to the next level. We can do the damn thing. A lot of men will not even pass that test. Why? Because they dick don't measure up in size or functionality. Shit is whack. And I made a video about erectile dysfunction. Y'all go and watch that video. I'm not going to recap that here. About the reasons why a man dick can just be why, you know. can be related to stress, his diet, mental health, you know. Stress will do it, though. It definitely will. Um, it can be related to medical conditions that cause impotency, right? Erectile dysfunction. Um... But nah, don't be playing. Nah, you might be playing because this is a thing. Some women, yo, we we take sex very sacred. It's something very like special to us, and so we'll go like years without having sex, and then boom. Of course, we're human. We get our urges, right? And then we wait around. And we think, okay, this is a nice guy. I like his energy. Maybe we can create this spiritual connection together, right? Sexually get our mind all fucking worked up and then you have sex and you're fucking disappointed like, what the fuck i waited two three years for this shit you know how disappointing that shit is y'all there's ways women we can avoid that you don't gotta go through that shit nah put these men through a test 
And any man that is right for you, he will do it. Make him drop his drawers, pull his penis out. You ain't got to get him hard and get himself hard. Men know. Men who are experienced know how to get their dick hard. They know how to make themselves ejaculate. And make him do that in front of you. Before he come inside of you. Fuck that. That's going to be the rule going forward. Because that will eliminate a lot of disappointment. <laughs> you don't have to go through that, women. Bad sex is a deal breaker. Stop gassing these pencil dick head ass niggas up. On that note, I'm going to end this video. Hope y'all enjoyed my storytelling. <laughs>